Ghosties, this week I wanted to take time out to hold space for those that had a chance to work and connect with Suzanne Fountain. The following are some brief thoughts and remembrances from just some of the people Suzanne's life impacted. Eric Sandvold. I have so many memories about our friend Suzanne Fountain. Um, and we just got the opportunity to share so many wonderful times together, special occasions like kids' birthdays and holidays and just wonderful long evenings um, and times at the theater, not uh, ever working together, but uh, seeing things and discussing things. Um, I really liked talking theater with Suzanne. She was very supportive, saw me in a lot of stuff, um, and I really respected her opinion, her feedback, because while she was supportive, she was never fawning, and and she'd tell it to you straight. And so if you got um, positive feedback, it was it meant something, it meant a lot. Um, and she was somebody that when you're speaking about theater, you could disagree with them, have a different take on things, but it never got tense. It was just, that's her opinion, which I greatly respected. And uh, uh, here's my opinion. And, and I like having those sorts of conversations. That was a special thing that I really valued about her and, and looked forward to sharing with her. Um, one thing that I think is important to note about Suzanne is that she worked as an actor at the Denver Center uh, as a local actor at a time when almost the only people working there were either part of the resident company or people brought in from uh, out of town or people who were associated with the conservatory, either as students or as recent graduates. And she uh, did several shows there. Um, Uncertainty, which I got the chance to see, uh, Back to the Blanket, Miss Julie, and I think it's important to note that her skill and her professionalism uh, in being a part of those shows laid the groundwork for other local actors that have had the opportunity to work at the Denver Center uh, after that. And so she really laid a foundation that uh, other people were able to benefit from. And and I have always appreciated that about her as an actor. Um, she's a wonderful mom and uh, just love her son, Nathaniel, our godson, so very much. He's an amazing person, and that's incredible credit to Suzanne. And um, I will personally miss her a great deal because while she shared a very, very special friendship with Martha, um, I always felt that as well as a family friendship that I had a personal friendship with her as well and uh, that we kind of had our own friendship on our own terms. That was very special to me. So um, huge loss. Another thing I want to say about Suzanne is that, in my experience, she was remarkably calm under pressure, which is a wonderful quality. As things got more chaotic and tense around her, she seemed to become more centered and grounded and still. And uh, I really admired that about her and uh, certainly benefited from it (laughs) uh, on occasion. And that quality, I think, was wonderfully um, apparent in her work in the healthcare system um, during some treatments over uh, quite a bit of time that my my dad was having at uh, Boulder Community Hospital. Uh, We often saw Suzanne uh, in a kind of welcoming capacity uh, at the hospital. And I can only imagine that that quality that had that effect on us um, of just really a calming, reassuring, centered quality um, would really have helped many, many people over many days and many years. And so I'm really grateful she was able to interact with people in that setting and in that way. And um, 
of course, she had this glorious smile that is still so very vivid to me and that other people have been able to see in photographs. It was remarkably sincere and remarkably consistent and uh, just glorious. Billy McBride. I first met Suzanne Fountain in 2001 when we were both cast in Wit for the Nomad Theatre in Boulder. It's a play about death. Suzanne played the nurse and she was so caring as a person, which is what made her so perfect for the role. Our scenes together were my favorites. And she was one of the big reasons that the play was so successful. After closing, we went back to our lives, but that two months with her is emblazoned in my heart and will remain so. Paul Burillo. First of all, um, I tried dozens of times to record an extemporaneous story about first working with Suzanne Fountain, but I couldn't do it. In each of the recordings, I found myself meandering into social comment about gun laws and the importance of theater and storytelling. But I didn't really want this message to be about that, so I finally decided to sort of write it down, at least give some notes that I can follow to keep me on task. We recently lost longtime theater director Bev Newcomb, who personally influenced my early acting career in Denver. The complexities of motions that, that have been surfacing at this time are almost overwhelming. Losing a fellow actor like Suzanne in the way that her life was cut short, that really hit home. We met back in 1991. Uh, it was my first season with the Denver Center, and we were both cast in original production of a play called Uncertainty, directed by Anthony Powell. The play took place right after the First World War in a hotel in Europe. It was a time of disorder, chaos, pain, and uncertainty. To add some irony, the world at that time was also just coming out of a global pandemic. The play was an intellectual farce with disturbing undertones. The plot evolved around a fictitious meeting between Albert Einstein and Werner Heisenberg as they argued their theories of relativity and uncertainty. It was a fast-paced romp where all of the characters were in a constant state of confusion with things never being what they seemed to be, kind of like today. But in the play, nobody died. Losing fellow actor Suzanne along with the other nine lives in such a senseless way, it, um, it really hit home. I'm reminded now to stop and take notice of how precious life is and the people we meet and the people that are in it. We need to love them. I shared a brief moment in time performing in a production with a beautiful soul, Suzanne Fountain. And it's true that our time on this earth is like the play. It's filled with uncertainty. Oh, sweet lady, rest in peace. The Ghost Lights podcast was created to bridge the gap between artists and make them friends. Remember that any time you have a chance to make an honest, authentic connection with someone, please do. No matter how short that moment may be, that connection can echo throughout one's life. You are enough. Take care, and we'll see you in two weeks, ghosties. I love you.